Hallelujah. You may be seated. It's good to be back again. Hallelujah. Can I hear you say it's good to be back? One more time. Praise God. David said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. And this I know for sure that God has set out today to give us some kind of depth of revelation. Amen. Father, I pray that the word that will come forth, O Lord, out of my mouth shall not be mine, but yours. I ask, O Lord Jehovah, that you minister to your people, touch lives, touch men and women. Lord, I decree that there is nothing here, O Lord, that will never leave untouched. I ask, O Lord, that as the word will come, let grace and power accompany it let it move with precision and signs and wonders i pray that i disappear from here lord and may you appear in jesus much less name to pray amen and amen jam those hands once again to jesus the lord of lords and the king of kings glory to his name amen i want to run through some things with us and um you know i want to bring forth something that we already know but i want to come on it on some different kind of dimension hallelujah the bible said in the book of acts chapter 4 verse 13 now when they saw the boldness of peter and john and perceived that they were unlearned meaning that they have never been to school so but they had great boldness when it comes to the things of god they were unlearned and ignorant men they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with who? They had been with who? They had been with who? So who you follow determines what follows you. Hallelujah. If Jesus walked in signs and wonders, then we have no excuse why we should not walk with signs and wonders. Praise God. The experience of Christ is a supernatural experience. And every time we turn to God, we are asking Him that we be like Him continually. Amen. So we give glory to God and this draws us down to the book of Acts chapter 5 where we're going to be dealing on majorly today. Acts chapter 5, reading from verse number 1. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also, being prevailed to eat, brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. I'm going to be speaking on the topic of caption, faithfulness. Faithfulness. we are custodians of what we think we have the moment we remove the sense of entitlement from what we think we have at that particular time we will learn to appreciate god faithfully this is our moment of thanksgiving and we have come to understand and know that there are many persons that feel so much entitled. They feel some sense of entitlement to their job. They feel they are entitled to the life that they have. They feel like, you know, everything that they have, they, were, they got it by the strength 
of their of their of their ability praise god but we all know that we are who we are by the grace of god we are nothing outside god we are nothing outside his love it is the love of god shed upon us that has given us the ability to possess things material things of this life and i tell people i said to them i said how do you know you love god you don't you don't love god when you feel like oh you have so much money to play around with you have so much material possessions to play around with that tells that you love god no that's no love the greatest part of your love is seen or displayed when you have nothing at the point when you have nothing is when the greatest test of your life comes into play wherever you're watching from today or you are in person today in the house i want you to know that self-entitlement is what leads us to pride we all know that god resists the proud man any person that has pride in them will be resisted by god he said humble yourself before the almighty and he in turn will lift you up by himself it's humility to accept that even though you went out to work for eight hours it's humility to accept the fact that god's god owns the money that you have been paid it's humility to accept the fact that even if you you feel like you walk out every day you exercise every day and you are fit it's humility to accept that one fact that god is the one keeping you healthy ananias and sapphira his wife if only they believe and know that no matter what they think they possess god is the owner of them and what they have if they have that mentality and understanding they will not try to play lotto with god the dangers of living a life of pride in the place of grace is so dangerous that when you step out of grace you may not know because pride is playing out self-entitlement i am entitled to this i am entitled to that i am supposed to be this i am supposed to be that but we forget that we are who we are by the grace of god somebody said to me and said do you know who i am i said yes i know I said to him, I said, you are nothing but six feet and a dust. You know, sometimes when people want to like display arrogance, you let them know that you are nothing. The moment the, the fan of life that gives you air to breathe is turned away from you, you will drop down like a vegetable and you'll be gone. It is that self-entitlement that makes people not to give unto God when it's time for them to sacrifice and to give. Hallelujah. Are you there with me? Verse number three. But Peter said to Ananias, why had Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? If that Bible is yours and it's not a borrowed one, underline the word lie to the Holy Ghost. Lie to the Holy Ghost. Ananias, why had Satan filled thy heart? to lie to the holy ghost 
to keep back part of the price of the land the greatest offense there is not even that he kept part of the possession the greatest offense i want you to see there was that he lied to the holy ghost but i want to draw something to your attention who was talking to ananias who was communicating with ananias peter who did ananias speak to when he was speaking face to face peter now you ask me a question about pastor why is it that from peter it turned around to become the holy ghost he's lying to when god sends a man that man from that day is no longer a man but a man of god get that very important that man from that day is no longer the man you, you used to know that man could be your husband that woman could be your wife that person could be your son that person could be younger than you or older than you from that day they are no longer the same and that's why do you know that pastors God could use them mightily but many of their family members are not blessed God could use a man mightily to do great works but when it comes to his own because they are not accepting him the way everyone is accepting him so when Ananias spoke to Peter he thought he was lying to Peter but he never knew that he was lying to the Holy Ghost. You know, this day and age is a time when many believers feel so entitled. Pastor can talk to me anyhow. Uh -huh. Why would pastor talk to me like that as a matter of fact? Does he know who I am? Is it because I am attending his church? because you feel you are doing him a favor to attend the point of correction the church is not his church it's the church of jesus christ he is a caretaker uh-huh so you should direct that talk to christ if you have strength tell christ is it because i'm coming to your church praise god the bible's speaking jesus was saying he said i will build my church did he say pastor will build the church say i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail so the builder of the church is christ and the day you rebel against the man of god you rebel against the builder of the church it is an order that canadian charter of rights has no power over the lordship of jesus christ is supreme to everything made of things seen and things unseen so when the communication was happening between ananias and peter he was like talking to peter like you know the fisherman he used to know yes after all peter was a fisherman did he go to school i just read you a scripture in acts chapter 4 verse 13 put up that scripture back again this is the reason why i let you know why people look down on pastors and thereby it brings them their damnation acts 4 13 everybody want to go give me the amplify one minute give me the amplify let's break that word and learn let's see what is actually talking about give me the amplifier let's go everybody want to go uh 
Ajá. So, what is the qualification to stand? Is it education? Is it certificates? What is the qualification here? Jesus. Show me a man that has Jesus. I will show you a man that you should not toy with. Even if you smoke something. Don't smoke it to the extent you are by. You don't recognize a man that has been with the Lord. And a man that God is with. Praise God. Give me that scripture from the beginning again. Praise God. He said, but Peter said, no, give me Acts chapter 4 verse 13 in Amplify. He said, now when the men of the San Sandrine Jewish high court saw the confidence. Why was Peter and John so confident? It was not based on the education or the English they know how to speak or the phonetic symbols, praise God, or the Queen's English. Hello? It is not based on their, that that their confidence was in. No, it is based on the confidence that they know that he that is in them is greater than he that is in the world. They saw the confidence and the boldness of Peter and John and grasped the fact that they were uneducated and untrained. Uneducated and untrained. Today when you talk to somebody they will ask you how many degrees do you have? You will see the alacrity, the confidence, the prestorious ability they have. They will question where you are coming from. Who give? Who, in fact, they will ask you, who gave birth to you? Who is your father? things are in the minor now let me let me break certain things down i'm I, I will be juggling between these two scriptures chapter four and five so follow me and Ananias knew who peter was that peter was a fisherman and you know that in those days the disciples of jesus were not rich because the gospel had barely had its bearing they had no possessions so at Acts chapter 5 people started bringing in their possession to make the church rich because you are not rich until your church is rich enough do i have a witness in the house you cannot brag of riches if your church is lacking and you are a member of the church your money is not working for you then and you are not using your money to push the gospel so they realized that the church was lacking and so because of the need in the church the disciples every one of them started bringing in their possessions they will some will sell their houses sell their lands sell their their their, their horses everything called precious things even their jewelries they will sell to bring the money to the church nobody asked them to they decided to do it and there was no preaching to cajole them to do it they decided to do it this generation is a generation that will refuse to decide and even when you preach to them they will say no even when you catch them they will say no they don't accept left they don't accept right praise god and the fact remains that ananias was a rich man because for him to sell a parcel of land a piece of his land which means he had other possessions him and his wife 
they came together they made an agreement we will sell this even though we have told the church that we are giving this whole land but when we sell it we will say instead of twenty thousand dollars we're going to bring ten thousand dollars to the church no 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 i'm even i'm even elevating them <laughs> praise god instead of telling the church that it is twenty thousand you know the church is small and they are beggarly i lift up my hand today and i speak under grace by the blood of jesus that this ministry will never live beggarly in the name of jesus one of the reasons why people would never give is because they think that you are not worthy of that amount they think that for what give them fifty dollars fifty thousand dollars for what you will see their mind you will see their hearts they will start pumping they are getting angry but forgetting that this is the pastor pastor peter in the bible is the one that has been praying for them is the one that has been standing with them am i communicating with somebody he's the one that has been that has been speaking over their life but when it was time for them to reciprocate not even to peter but back to god that gave them life and strength and energy to stand strong they started playing politics they started they started looking out for who is qualified if the church is qualified enough to have their little change what a sin what a sin believe you me there are believers like that in all churches there are people like that everywhere all they do all they do is to is to is to look at is to is to is to weigh the church i pray that god have mercy on us in the name of jesus so ananias saw peter and underrated him this uneducated man him and his fellow fishermen the other day we saw that we even bought fish from them they were begging us to buy suddenly this jesus came and they started following him they became popular anyways let's just go to their church it's not because we so much believe in them or we are afraid of them you know let's just attend let it not be like us we are we are the devils in the city so ananias and sapphira never believed that peter or the church is worthy of the sales of that land hallelujah give me chapter 5 now and verse 3 chapter 5 and verse 3 the amplify too let's see what happened chapter 5 acts chapter 5 verse 3 but peter said ananias why has satan filled your heart to lie to the holy spirit and secretly keep back for yourself some of the proceeds from the sale of the land why 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 has Satan filled your heart that your tight is no longer complete suddenly? You take some. In fact, you take your you take your pay and you take tight out of it. Inside the tight, you are still dragging the tight with God. Ah, Jesus. Is your palm aradite? Is there some kind of glue? In your palm that anything that touches it does not live they keep dragging this thing if even with the little even if after they split the tight into three places and give god one place they will still be putting their eyes inside the offering box what is happening in there what is like 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 crap what what is happening what is happening
we give glory to God God is faithful because if 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 it is by how some of us are operating some believers operate then the church will be having serious problem by now praise God he said why have you allowed Satan to fill your heart now when such a thing happens this is what happens verse 4 of it give me verse 4 this is exactly what happened he said as long as it remained unsold look at that did it not remain your own to do with as you pleased and after it was sold after it was sold was the money not on that oh my god people many many of us just put ourselves in unnecessary trouble this is your money it is yours if you say you don't want to give it out it will still be yours why do you have to give it and lie over it like you stole the money he said after it was sold was the money not under your control why is it that you have conceived this act of hypocrisy are you saying that and deceit in your heart you have not simply lied to people that word people there talks about groups departments in the church he said but to god but to God earlier on I was trying to connect the reason why people think that they lie to pastor they think that it is pastor the reason why when they challenge pastor I don't care the church you attend I don't care the name of your church and I don't care what's happening there but if that man stands up there as a servant of God you have no audacity or right to judge and to attack his personality because he may be the chiefest of all sinners he may not be pure but god kept him there so if you attack him you are attacking god himself and you will get broken very soon people do things and they just they 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 think that oh i will escape this one no it's not all you escape my dear one day one day it will cut it will it will it will it will it will will get a hold of you you will be caught red and dead hallelujah and peter was like worried why would you do such a thing let's let's see let's see verse verse 7 verse 7 what verse 7 has to say and hearing these words now some people thought that it was peter that 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 um um that actually cost cost him praise god now after an interval of about three hours his home oh, go back to verse six go back to verse six verse five and hearing these words ananias fell down so it wasn't peter that cost him get this straight some people preach oh and peter was furious and angry and laid a curse no he doesn't need to lay a curse on ananias because ananias action has judged him already peter only called out the activities of ananias and did you ever read anywhere that ananias fell on his knees and asked for forgiveness no ananias was standing like Saul. he was another Saul in the new testament He was standing bold because so-called Peter that didn't go to school was talking to him. He was standing in a way and manner that 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 that, 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 that his boldness lied to him. You know, there's a way your boldness could lie to you. you overestimate yourself. Overestimating yourself is when your boldness is lying to you. You see somebody that could beat you very well. You are telling yourself that by faith i can fight it <laughs> you you are just you are you are about to commit suicide and people are reminding you you will die or you will die you you are overestimating yourself 
it's like when when a lizard goes to a crocodile and asks him for a battle it's like a goat walking majestically walking into the lion's den and telling the lion that today we will rack it out <laughs> i'm not there don't call me raise god there are certain things you know that you should not even joke with i was i don't know if i told you guys this this story a young man that he gave some property landed property praise god i hosted this pastor from the united states and a special offering was called out nobody asked him to come you know sometimes some persons wants to do certain things to please maybe their girlfriend in the church or maybe there is this girl they've been toasting and as they've been toasting this girl you know the girl they, so they want to prove that you know we you know you know they want to prove that they got it they got swag they got the money any woman you think that you will win with money you're a weak man every real man doesn't use money so you you come on if, if you say you're a man take off your your pocket keep it come and talk you see people that use money to go and ask a girl out are those that hide they hide they hide one corner they call somebody and say help me help me help me go and tell that girl that those are not men are you with me those are not men at all no you are not a man if you need to send somebody to go and help you talk to a woman you are not a man praise god something is wrong something is wrong with you you are not a man i tell you you know one anyway we are not on relationship this but let me just digress a little bit there is one thing a woman looks at from a man the one thing a woman looks at from from a man the first time he will encounter the man is boldness you know there are some ladies when you see them the way they look you know that money is all over them as a man you need special grace of god to walk up to them because their appearance alone is intimidating some men tell themselves and say this one is not my type let me go look for my type <laughs> praise god this one is not my type this one will kill me let me go look for my type you you are afraid every woman is like a mountain and the bible says, who is that mountain before zerubbabel go barakati kabosha he said you shall be made as a plane so when you see a woman body bro brother body walk up to that woman and say hello how are you you look beautiful then when the woman will look at you and say wow such a boldness that alone let's go back to what we're saying praise god so the boldness that you exercise when you carry god is what even demons look out for that's why you see sometimes when you speak to a demon possessed person in the name of jesus come out they will tell you i'm not going anywhere you are there they are telling you i'm not moving they know they will still move but they want to test your boldness in 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 my in my little years of experience in deliverance it has always been the case they don't just walk out like that no they will always tell you i'm not going we are not living because they want to see and sometimes they belittle you 
when you speak to them they just look at you they laugh and you now you now in your heart you say ha ha for this demon to be laughing at me like this it simply means that there is no fire inside of me to cast out this demon you will start procrastinating say you know what let's continue this deliverance the next day praise god when ananias heard the words it was the, the, the action of Ananias that judged Ananias. And the Bible said, suddenly, suddenly, the Bible said, and great fear and awe gripped those who heard of it. Now, somebody will say, oh, forget about it. God cannot kill this day. Who told you that? This incident happened 2,000 years ago. Do you know that archaeologists are digging out things 4,000 years ago today? So, when Christ came and left, it was just 2,021 years ago. Christ's time on earth here is still fresh in the memories of humanity. The activities of Jesus Christ and the disciples and the apostles of Christ is just yesterday. 2021 years ago. So don't think it that the God in New Testament God killed. In Old Testament also he killed. And you think that he's oh, you know, don't get it twisted with your message of mercy 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 here and there grace and grace all over that's why we come before god every day we say father if there is anywhere we have seen knowingly or unknowingly we may have erred against thee have mercy the bible says, he that thinketh his stand should take heed this he falls for there is no one perfect before the eyes of God. For our, our righteousness is but a filthy rag before his eyes. That's why we claim the righteousness of Christ. Because in the righteousness of Christ, we have protection. It is not of our righteousness. It is not of our doings. It is the doings of the Holy Spirit. That's why we got to be conscious of what we do and how we do it. What, how we go about things when it gets to do with God. Are you there? And in verse number 6, verse number 6, and the young men in the congregation, this thing was hap happening in the church, not in the farmland. In the church. He said they got up and wrapped up the body and carried it out and buried it question you ask yourself where was Sapphira, the wife everybody had everything but Sapphira never had anything that is the reason why people are in church but they are not listening to the gospel people are in church but they are not hearing what pastor is preaching Sapphira was logging around. The community heard what happened. But because she was not paying attention, she came in like I'm celebrating too. That's why it pays to listen. Somebody say it pays to listen. It pays to pay attention. Pay attention. Praise God. The Bible says it is better to what to listen more than be than be quick to speak. Hear more. Tell show me a person that listens more and speak less. I will show you a person that will operate in the level of wisdom. But show me people that listen very small some don't even they don't even wait for you to finish the talk they pick the talk from you and as you want to start they pick it boom 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 so tell me how would you even learn how would you know 
Praise God. I tell you what we call those kind of people in my dialect. You want to hear it? Open your ears. <laughs> or Kachamara. <laughs> They think they know it all. People like Ananias' wife are those that come to church late and picking things that is happening in real time church. They come to church very late. They fail. They they they, they fail to hack into the first instruction. Am I communicating with somebody? They don't know what has been instructed before time. They come to church when church has gone halfway. Because when it was time to take the proceeds, it is called collection time. A time where you take offering. So which means the preaching has gone and is ended. They were at the break of the end of the service. Where they were collecting offerings and tithes. That was when Mrs. Ananias was coming to church how many how many could lose their place because of lateness how many could be destroyed in the church because of lateness do you know that some of us if you carry this church now go and put it inside of one of our rooms we will still be attending service late i'm not joking experience has taught me that people that live close to church are those that come to church late you know why because in their heart they say is it not the church that is in, at our backyard here no problem i will go service is by eight o'clock and by 6 30 the holy spirit has woken you up to do your morning devotion you will say no 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 not now when somebody tell you get up and get to church you say for what why am i in a hurry the church is just by the roadside here and by 7 30 you are still lazing about on the bed by 7 45 that's when you get up hey i'm late no angels should clap for you and give you a trophy And when you come to church, you come and lie in church. Oh, you know, ah, I was so busy. And they will be walking like this. See, ah, my God, Pastor, you don't just know. Today has been hectic. Oh, wonderful. Hectic with you and your nightwear. I, I know of a woman that, that blames it on the husband. That, Pastor, is this my husband? Every time in the morning, I want to leave and get up and get ready and get up. My husband will hold me. I say, hey. You people should not allow God to burn that your mattress with fire. So that you will not see any mattress again to lay on. I say, really? He say, yes. And the man, and the man will just be quiet like this and be looking. Pastor, is him or is him, is him? Is in no problem let's continue verse number seven verse seven now after an interval of about three hours look at that three hours his wife came in not knowing what had happened verse eight peter asked her tell me where that you sold your land for so much now listen some people say oh as husband and wife you have to do things as what as what do you have to die as do you have to die as one hmm. if i have a wife and the person is actually misbehaving and you the person wants to go to hell will, will i be stupid to join the person to hell no 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 that's not a ministry of marriage no 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 no. if you have if you have a husband and the husband said i don't want to go to heaven i want to go to hell please in the name of jesus don't join him to hell god won't congratulate you
when it comes to when it comes to a height whereby even if the suggestion to do evil comes from the husband or the wife let it be that one of them will caution the other and say no we must not do this evil against the lord it is all like us for god has been faithful to us at least ananias or sapphira should have told themselves that look at all the possessions we have how many can we boast that we got by our strength and our power and just this one piece of land we should now use it and destroy everything we have like i was saying this this young man actually came out and gave a land a landed property to the church everybody clapped i was shocked to tell you the truth he was prayed for that's why i tell you that the fear of god has departed from the church he was prayed for he brought some documents and he took me to the land and i took oil and i poured oil on the land after three months or four months down the line i was sleeping one day and the lord tapped me call him and ask him what he has done with the land and when i called him i said to him what have you done to the land you gave to the church he said i'll call you back sir and when i probed deep i found out that suddenly he sold the land he went behind and took the same land he gave to god and sold the land i said what and suddenly i was so furious i said to him i said son do you know what you have just done you've mortgaged your entire destiny He started begging some church members came they were begging some held my foot and said please show mercy and he said he will restitute he had another option of another land he had he took me to that same land. you know some persons when they are destined to be destroyed by the devil no matter what you do they are just destined it's just like it's just like judas iscariot he was destined no no amount of prayer jesus would have prayed that would have saved him because the man his heart is already corrupt and suddenly he took me to this land yet again i warned him i said do not encroach into this land from today this is consecrated to the lord and god alone and i took the oil again and poured on that land this one is one month he didn't waste time this one is one month the land was gone and when it was gone i called him and say you see you will not be in this church for the kind of the the the, the punishment that will come upon you is still in the gym is gymming i said to him like unstable as water waywardness is your way from today go i never return See, today as I'm talking to you, he's still roaming the streets. They think that they are doing it to God, to, to the man of God. They think that they are doing it to the church. They fail to understand that the deity of Christ is a deity indeed. That you are doing anything in the church, even if it's to wipe the seats in the church, wipe it based on you are doing it to the deity of christ you're singing you're doing whatever you're doing you think you're doing it for pastor even some of us i even i even it's like i'm even begging you to do your morning devotion ah! like it's for me you are lucky oh. you have a kind of pastor like me that cares to want to make sure your morning devotion 
not service your morning devotion i have the time to call you i want to let you know also that it's not going to be like this forever uh, because a time will come when i will not have the time to do that so if you don't want to grow you're on your own because if you don't hear the truth from me where else will you hear it from if I, if I come here and I gather you all and I tell you what sweets you, what, you know, we, you know, we make your kidney start dancing and, you know, enjoying, what benefit shall it be to you? That when you open your mouth outside and talk and they ask you, who are you? Say you're a believer. They say, please, that church you're going, don't go it. Don't go to that church again. What benefit would it be? No matter what you think you have achieved, your pastor is not your age mate. Age-wise, you may be older than him, but spiritually, he's your, he's your father. And he didn't choose it. He didn't choose that upon himself. No. God placed it upon him as an invocation. So don't think that it is an easy job to manage human beings. It's very difficult to. Human beings are the most difficult things to manage. You can manage chicken, even a goat. If the goat knows that by this time they come out to eat and by this time they go in, just watch them. Do it like that six months. You find out that you don't need to tell them come out. By the time it gets to that time, that they need to be out. Every one of them will be at the door. And by the time you open the door, they go out to eat. Immediately that time is there that they know they have to go in. You just see them. They start walking in one after the other. But human beings, ah, some will be stretching on the bed. It's time to get up. I'm not getting up now. Because we think that we have this entitlement to ourselves. open your eyes open your eyes the level at which the church is today some of us don't even know what is happening beneath activities if you have a pastor that is still standing speaking the word of God without any favoritism without mixing things you should give God thanks. Amen. I tell you. When people have to change from what they do, how they do things, and acknowledge that this thing is all about God. It's all about God, people of God. It is all about God, not you, not me. It's all about God. We are just a mere vessel that God uses to reach out to his people. It's all about God. Today people want to be in church and they want you to talk to them in a particular kind of way. Ha! Huh some wants to be in church and they want you to address them in a particular kind of way some even have special seats in the church and when you ask them they say eh, if pastor has special seat why won't i have special seat and the day the usher tells them no you're not sitting here go sit here hey. <laughs> that, that day that day there will be no service. Sense of entitlement. No wonder, no wonder, no wonder some of us are struggling. God is not even answering our prayers anymore. Because we are too entitled. Too entitled. Ah, oh, my God. 
and when peter asked her tell me the truth did you guys at this point safira would have been smart to know that peter knows you see sometimes when satan has decided to use some people's head to play ludo praise god you know the dice you will block their ears they won't be hearing anything at this point when a man of god has asked you that's why i tell some of us i say for the fact i ask does not mean i don't know i want us to have conversation as normal human beings if everything i'm doing with you is spiritual spiritual will you be here you will run away because if i start saying everything i'm saying then they will everybody will go and tell me and say let the spirits the spirit of the dead let them come and be having service with you because you are no longer a human being you're a spirit <laughs> uh, when a pastor asks you this 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 that was it like this what are you struggling to hide for open your mouth and say it the way it is this is what it is pastor if i made mistake yes i made mistake here i made mistake here that is what it is pastor's place is not there to demoralize you or to destroy you he will rebuke you in love and at the same time tell you the appropriate way to go may god have mercy on us verse 9 i'm still going somewhere then peter said to her how could you two have agreed together to put the spirit of the lord to the test you know some people do what they do they want to check if pastor will know i tell you he will not know god does not reveal anything to him let's just tell him this lie it's a little lie the way i will the way i will put the lie i will put it in a way that even though he catches me i will tell him but i wasn't trying to lie you know i i i i, I know people i want to just be looking at them <laughs> and sometimes the reason why i wouldn't say anything you know why i don't want to embarrass them i want them to still be free to come close to me because there is a way you expose somebody and it becomes a public embarrassment and that person's soul could be lost because the person will be so timid and so sh and so shy to even come to church before you know it that person is heading to destruction so sometimes with wisdom we just overlook but don't use that overlook as a yastic that this is what you have to be doing hmm. god have mercy so are we there say how could you two have agreed together to put the spirit of the lord to the test he said look the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out also and what happened next give me the scripture what happened next and at once somebody said at once she fell down at his feet and died and the young men there are special brothers in the church that they are good in taking people that are dead spiritually out of the church and the young men came in <laughs> and found her dead i said ah this one has died too peter seems like you have anointing today to key <laughs> let's be taking them out like chicken and they carried her out and buried her beside her husband what a testimony Is that a good one that can never be a good testimony you know in a marriage one person may get out of order that's why they are two the other person helps them draw them in back but when the man and the woman they are full of evil whoo, who will save who who will save who it becomes so disastrous ananias made a mistake as a man that couldn't that couldn't guide his wife very well 
the Bible said they both agreed to commit this evil. So look deep inwards. If there is any sense of entitlement you are having attaching to yourself. You know, the first day I, I went to the morgue, to the mortuary, and I looked at dead people, beautiful ladies, handsome men. I say, Ha! Death is very rich. Look at them. This one would have said two days ago. I said, I will deal with you in seven days' time. Yeah, he is. This one, the other day, we have said, oh, this, that, and that. But here he is. Who do we even think we are? What sense of entitlement do we think can make us if not the sense of pride inside of us that keep telling us that we are better off than our neighbor look at it look at it very well look at yourself and for once tell god thank you i have nothing david say all i have is thine all that i have is thine i don't care how hard i work everything i have belongs to you a church will struggle because the fact remains that even those asking god to bless them to help the church they want to do it out of pride and so therefore the breakthrough of the church will be delayed we have to get it right why do you think things are happening and the struggle is there the mindset is not right the intention the intention to do what you want to do the real intention is not of god god will never sponsor anything that his glory will not be part of oh pastor i want to buy you a car pastor i want to buy you an aeroplane lord i want to build you a church can you build that church for god and shut up and not tell anybody is it possible have you asked yourself that question can you buy that car for your pastor and shut up indeed till you go to your grave without telling anybody without saying it can you clothe your pastor without opening your mouth to say it can you clothe that sister in the church can you clothe that brother without opening your mouth telling your wife or your husband without saying it the bible says, what the right hand does let not the left know today we have people come on social media you see a man that is begging he can't afford anything that's why he's begging you put on your video you want to make a show of him you say people watch watch you know i'm just going to bless the life of this man and you give him on what are you doing you know what some persons do when they do such videos and they get to a particular level they start asking for arms they start becoming the chief beggar you don't know oh i thought you know when they when they do those videos with time they start being the one to beg from other source top source. oh you see i'm begging from you so i want to give to these ones but the money doesn't go recently i was listening to the news there is this big organization here it's a charity that takes money from the rich from left and right in canada here say they are building schools in kenya only for some investigators to go down there and find out that there is no building they just put one stick put here one same building they will advertise it to different source that have sent in millions that this is what you build they will take off the name of this person and when this other one wants to visit they will put that person's name i say this is the building you built when that person goes 
another donor that wants to come and see what the beauty will come they will remove that name and put another one ah! and you find that that believers are part of it you see this heaven eh? <laughs> heaven will shock also heaven will be filled of surprise and shock hell also will be filled with surprises and shock the bible said there is that that seemeth right unto a man say but the end of it is destruction it's right in your eyes is it not keep doing the book of revelation ended by saying let him that doeth good go on with his good and those that are doing wrong let them continue this is one thing as i speak today i say to us forget about self what cream will you cream this body that this body will not die tell me we are the cell that cream what food will you feed to this body that this body will become immortal if not spiritual food can you buy spirit go to walmart and show me at any shelf anywhere at all we are they put that this is spiritual food you eat you buy this and eat you will not you will never die you can't have it show me where it is and i'll give you a million dollars you're laughing pastor you have million dollars <laughs> are we are still here <laughs> no show me where it is the only thing that guarantees eternity is the bread of life the bible this one that is the only thing that can guarantee if you like you have a company that is running in billions or millions hello you will go and leave it i was in the internet the other day and i saw a dead man he's so dead and they sat him on the seat there's nothing our black brothers won't do they sat him on the seat in america they sat him on the seat in america and they wore him all the gold he sat down and i said okay no problem open your eyes then let's see when you are tired of sitting you will still lay down dust everything we are bragging about dust everything we are hey hey do you know do you know do you know do you not know dust That's why we got to humble ourselves. There is nothing in this life. Who, who amongst us has seen this life more than Solomon? Who has explored everything in this life more than King Solomon? 300 wives and 700 concubines. My God. so no more no wonder his wisdom he used it to 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 redefine everything and let us know that there is nothing in there i tell you solomon went into life he took every dimensions of life came out of life entered through the other end came out again and entered through the back and came out and said to us i say all vanity upon vanity all is vanity so you what you want to see go in there to go and see the vanity that solomon went in he came out with nothing no certificate he said it is vanity i went to i went to someone's house very beautiful house and they took me around was looking and i saw this toilet yeah, when you sit down, you finish pooing. You don't need to move your hand. You just press, but it will wash your bumper for you. I say, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. But after that now, then what? 
can that wc wash out your sins you know you, you know one of the deception that the devil is playing with people and i will tell you and some of us are living that deception i'll tell you the deception of oh if i'm about to die now i will just tell god i'm sorry you're joking you're acting like you even know the time and how it will happen you know something no you know i just I, I will just be doing what i'm doing if i just notice that I, i'm not going to make it again uh -huh, i will now rearrange my life with god fraud people that wants to get into heaven through fraudulent means thieves jesus caught some of them in the temple flogged them out the house of my father shall be the house of prayer not danes of thieves people that wants to there are people that wants to jump the fence of heaven to get into heaven they want to go through the back door some are chiseling the fence they're trying to open they're, they're trying to bore hole through the fence bo, bo, they are hitting every day bo, bo, bo. you can't get in through the back door there is only one way you must walk out your salvation with fear and trembling only one way only one way whether you be rich whether you be poor it doesn't matter what matters is eternity these days we don't hear eternity message anymore it's either you're fighting your enemy and you're calling fire down or you're talking about you want to reach you want to be so rich nobody talks about eternity we are living like they are updating the earth you know how how microsoft world updates its software every month you think you're being updated uh, this earth is plunging if you don't know know it now there is no religiosity in it the gospel the scriptures are coming to fulfillment it is plunging it is what plunging you have to have that at the back of your mind this earth will be consumed with liquid fire god will destroy this earth if you think that you want to build your two bedroom flat and be here forever it's not going to work we all we must live we are we are visitors here we are not landlords we are passing by so don't have this entitlement of that oh i bought a house okay you bought a so what i am living here uh, so what that's why people like the early apostles they didn't break their head about so much achievement the achievement is this that they, they that they live the gospel in truth the achievement is this that they that they pass the gospel to you and i they preach the gospel to men and women conquered cities people like gideon that by the hand of the lord conquered nations paul went to places where they say if you preach you die he went in there to preach today nobody wants to say jesus you say why you say because the government said do not strike today nobody wants to say the lord is good you say why you say because i don't want to go to jail the selfishness of this generation is so deep that is what we call the new generation entitlements i will not go to jail for you i will not go to jail for you nobody wants to sacrifice for each other nobody wants to die either 
but everybody wants to go to heaven what a word we must call our consciousness back and Christ must be the center of it all if what you're doing for that brother is not centered around Christ it's fake if what you're doing for that sister is not centered around Christ it's fake if what you're doing for your church is not originally based on Christ's love one day you will turn a rebel because it won't be long flesh will speak let what you do be, do it unto the lord not unto man then flesh will never speak we're in a precarious time very dangerous season and very dangerous times when you see when you see people that are white they will turn black suddenly when you see black people they will turn white suddenly and some of us that we see white will call it black and when they ask you why did you call white black you say you know because you see when you look at that you start explaining explaining what you don't even understand the reason why we are where we are today is because the world has stopped calling evil evil and it's never going to stop but you can stop yourself from calling evil good you can tell yourself i'm not going to be part of it remember i always say to you that god doesn't call a community of people he calls just one person may you be that person today that god has called may you be that one person that god is searching for may you be that one person that your heart has told yourself and said no the reason why i am alive and i'm living is for christ and i will live for christ if possible if it comes to it i will die for christ it's gain for us it's gain bow your heads wherever you are thank you holy spirit give you all thanks lord lord you're beautiful father we say may your name be praised lord we give you all thanks lord Touch our spirits, touch our soul, touch our body. Touch everything that has to do with us, O oh Lord. Forgive us in every area we've come short of your glory. Let your mercy speak on our behalf. Touch our hearts, Lord. Give us a new purpose. Turn us aright when we go left. Allow us, O oh Lord, to accept rebuke when it's necessary. Allow us, O oh Lord, to change from that that is taking us to a place of destruction. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for renewing our spirits. Thank you for giving us the right mindset. Thank you for making us who you want us to be. Lord, may your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' matchless name we pray.